Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Boardsy, and this is going to be a review of the Fnatic Bolt, a wireless lightweight esports performance gaming mouse from Fnatic with a box that opens in a unique way and features that are pretty sick for the $80 price point. I'm going to be honest. This is a new shape. It's not a clone of anything, which is always awesome. I would describe the shape as somewhere in between the Razer Viper Mini and the Zowie S2C. And I'll talk about the shape in more detail later, but what you really need to know is that it's a small, medium-sized mouse designed for claw grip, works for fingertip as well. I wouldn't really recommend it for palm. That I would say is closest to the Zowie S2, and the back of the mouse does have similarities to the Viper Mini, but it is distinctly its own shape. It has extremely flat sides, if you have not noticed already, and does not curve out much towards the bottom. Um, but yeah, the first thing I want to really talk about is the build quality of this mouse and just the in-hand like quality and weight feeling. The Bolt does weigh in at 70 grams and structurally it does feel very good. There are no issues with creaking, any types of flexing, rattling. Um, so that is definitely positive. The mouse does feel well built in the weeks that I have been using it. The weight of the mouse at 70 grams is nothing crazy lightweight by 2022 standards. But for a wireless mouse with a good feeling structure, I'm not complaining about the 70 gram weight, but obviously something like the Super Light does have a better in-hand feeling, in my opinion, being around 10 grams lighter, larger in general, so the weight just feels lighter. So I was obviously able to get used to the weight. A ton of mice are in that near 70 gram range. I just think for a mouse that is this size on the smaller end, weighing 60 grams, would really make it stand out in terms of weight instead of now where it's just like uh, middle of the pack. The weight balancing is solid though. Um, so really nothing to complain about with the weight. It's just it could feel lighter, obviously. The next thing I want to cover are the main clicks and the side buttons. So the main switches are Kale 8.0s, which have truly just become the industry standard. Omron stocks must be going down and the side buttons, I'm not sure what switches they're using. But it sounds like the uh, fake side button switch that Pulsar uses and in general, pretty stiff, heavy feeling side buttons. I'll do a quick sound test so you can hear the side buttons versus the main clicks. So definitely not kill 8.0s and I kind of wish they were because if these were a light, crisp feeling side button, it would be a lot better than uh, whatever this currently is. And I don't want to make it seem like the side buttons kill the mouse, but it's just a shame because the design of these buttons is very good. They're large, they're in a good place for your thumb, but just the actual feeling of the switch itself is mediocre in my opinion as somebody who needs to click side buttons while aiming the mouse. Um, so basically if you play anything besides Fortnite, you probably won't be affected as much as I am. But yeah, just worth mentioning about the side buttons. The main clicks, like I said, using Kale 8.0 is very snappy and crisp sounding. I do have minor quality issues on my black unit, but my white one is honestly like perfect. And this is the one I've put most of the time on. So this one did just come out of the box somewhat scuffed. So I do have a few issues on this black unit. One of them is pre-travel. There's a lot of pre-travel on this left click. You can see much less on the right click. But on the right click, I do have a grinding issue where if you click it from an angle, you can sort of feel a grind from the uh, plastic contact over the plunger of the switch, presumably. But without quality issues, these switches feel great. Um, they do have a strong tactile response if that's something you look for in a switch. gives it a premium feel while still being totally spammable. It's not a heavy feeling implementation of Kales by any means. But compared to something like Omron 20Ms on the G Pro Super Light or the clicks on Vaxi and Zowie Mice, uh, they don't have quite the same instantaneous rebound feeling. At the end of the day, these clicks are totally usable in game. I'd say a solid implementation of Kale 8.0s, um, but one of my units did have a few quality issues. Next thing I want to talk about is this scroll wheel. If you look at this and say that it isn't a work of art, you should be slapped in the face. Look at this scroll wheel. It has bolts on it. The mouse is called the bolt. My goodness, that is just a pure work of art. All jokes aside, the scroll wheel does feel pretty solid. I mean, well-defined steps. It's completely silent. 
Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, if you're just looking for that type of scroll wheel, no issues with the uh, scroll wheel click, probably on the medium light side. Now I'm going to move on to the shape of the Fnatic Bolt and who I think it's actually for. Like I said before, it takes inspiration from the Zowie S2 and the back hump feels similar to the Viper Mini. The Bolt is a step up in size compared to the Viper Mini, as you can see, but both mice are short and have high profile humps that taper off pretty aggressively. Um, so what I mean by that is it doesn't have a long hump that's going to fill out the back of your palm uh, that like just gradually tapers off. It's sort of aggressive and if you relax claw with larger hands, at least for me, it's just not too comfortable and the hump is always slipping around in my palm. Um, doesn't help that the coating is not that great. It's just a pretty chalky feeling coating. If you do have sweaty hands, I do find, I think you'll find it a bit slippery. But for me, it was passable, but just not a really great coating. Not a sticky, rubbery, or matte feeling, which I think is what most people are looking for in a coating. Getting back to the shape, though, I think the Bolt is going to be popular amongst people of all hand sizes for aggressive claw grip. The flatness of these sides really gives you room to place your fingers wherever you want. The Bolt also feels surprisingly good for fingertip. It does not have a bulky feeling at all, and the back hump does not interfere with just a true fingertip grip. Um, so yeah, pretty versatile shape, but if you do have quite large hands and do a relaxed claw grip, you might have trouble like finding a secure locked in grip, or at least I did. And honestly, when I think about it, it's probably due to the fact that I had to hit these heavy ass side buttons while dealing with the slippery coating while aiming that I actually had issues gripping this mouse in Fortnite because in aim trainers and other games, I really didn't have many issues with getting a consistent grip. Um, but yeah, that's enough for the shape. Next thing to talk about, I guess, would be the sensor. It's using a 3370. This mouse has 2.4 gigahertz mode and a Bluetooth mode. I've ha not had any issues with liftoff distance, connectivity, no perceivable motion delay. And yeah, the implementation of the 3370 is on par with other good implementations of the same sensor. I feel like the less there is to report on with the sensor, the better, and I did not have any negative experiences, but I do wish the sensor position was slightly higher because my thumb does go past the sensor, which for a day or two just gave me a weird feeling with crosshair placement, but then I just adjusted to the feeling and was fine with the performance. The Bolt does use USB-C to charge, as you can see. Give it up for USB-C. You get an adapter, a dongle, the whole nine. And uh, yeah, I've only had to charge this white one in around two weeks of use one time. So this isn't going to be a mouse that you have to charge every few days. Does have that a good battery life as far as I can tell, um, which once again is a good thing. The software, I can't really say the same about. Does seem to not have full support for the Bolt yet. Still seems to be pretty finicky because there is a firmware update you need to do to access the settings. But every time I do the firmware update, it's like, okay, please wait, firmware update complete. And then it just tells me to update the firmware again. So I'm sure that they'll get those issues ironed out. But for now, I am stuck with the default settings on this mouse, which are one millimeter LOD and four MSD bounce time. I think that about covers everything on the Bolt. Aside from these skates, these are PTFE, pretty thick skates. You get an extra set in the box. You can see the edges are rounded well, nothing too special about these glides. Definitely on the control side, this is a faster pad, but on something slow like the Vax EPA, even the Artisan Zero, these are heavily controlled. So if you're into slower, more controlled PTFE stock skates, you'll probably love these. Um, but yeah, once they broke in, they're pretty smooth and little to complain about for stock skates. And that's going to be all for my review of the Fnatic Bolt. It's refreshing to see a small wireless mouse designed at claw grip. And when you consider the price, specs, and in-hand feeling, it is definitely a good package for $80.00. Not my personal favorite really in any aspect, but it is a well-designed mouse for the most part, and I'm not going to give it the seal of approval, but I do see a lot of people, especially with small to medium hands, enjoying it a lot. Um, so that's going to be all for my review. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I appreciate Fnatic sending them out early for a review, but obviously this review is not biased in any way.